and all the members of our choir, they'll be ready to. They'll be there. I'll be there. They will sing another, a better song, a greater song up there. And you will sing with the choir over there in Jesus' name. Tonight is a special night. Number one, it's our Tuesday Development Leadership uh, Session. And we're going to speak to the leaders. It's wonderful for you. It's like the students are sitting with the professors and the professors are listening. And then the students are there and they're gathering everything. The blessing of God is coming upon your life. And as you know, these days, it's not just the congregation here. I wish the whole world will hear that song we just heard now, so that everyone will get ready in Jesus' name. Now, look at this. All our workers are here, all our leaders are here, all our members are here, and all our invitees are also here. Invitees, I welcome every one of you. I wish I could come there. You know, you're coming for the first time, and you see my face, and I see your face. Don't mind. Blessing is coming upon your life our online audience my heart specially goes to you actually we thank the lord you've been connected online all through this time i've decided now after we finish all this been watching for the announcement i'm going to give our online audience a special treat rejoice for them and the Lord is going to turn every life around in Jesus' name. Now tonight, there is preaching, there is teaching, there is training, there is development, there is evangelism, there is proclamation, there is miracle. It's coming. I said it's coming. Bow your head and let's pray together. Father, we thank you tonight. We bless your name for the glorious time we're having together. And we're praying, oh Lord, with this study of the word, you prepare every heart. And we pray that none of us will be missing on that final glorious day in Jesus' name. Enlighten us. Prepare us and do your work of grace and work of power in every life even today in jesus name we well, thank you because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray god bless you consider tonight we're looking at revelation chapter 16 and i'm reading verse 1 reading verse 15 and reading verse 19. revelation chapter 16 we're reading from verse 1 and i heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels go your ways and pour out the veils of the wrath of god upon the earth I need to tell you, uh, maybe you don't know, many of us know, that this period we're reading of is the period of the great tribulation. You see, God has a timetable. This is the dispensation of the church. And then, when it comes to an end, the church will be taken away in the rapture. After the rapture, there will be a seven-year period of the great tribulation upon the earth. And that period of the great tribulation, there will be the wrath of God, there will be the wrath of the Antichrist, there will be the wrath of the Lamb, all poured out upon the earth. That's what he's saying here when it says, go your ways and pour out the veils of the wrath of God upon the earth. Look at verse 15. In verse 15, Behold, I come as a thief. That is, I'll come suddenly, 
I'll come unannounced. I'll come specially. And I will take the precious thing of the earth, the church, my bride. I'll take that bride away. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and deceive his shame. You see, when he comes, he'll be coming for those who are clothed in the white robe of righteousness. Those who are, who are being washed in the blood and they are clothed in the garment of salvation. And he says, keep that garment on. Keep your salvation on. Keep that robe of righteousness on lest he come suddenly and then the sea of shame after the church has been taken away like that look at verse 19 now in verse 19 and the great city was divided into three parts and the cities of the nations fell great revolution period and the great and great babylon came in remembrance before god Babylon at that time, not the Babylon of Nebuchadnezzar, that one is gone and forgotten. And the defeat had come for the Babylon of Nebuchadnezzar. But this one is the future Babylon. It will be the capital, the headquarters of the Antichrist. And then the wrath of God, the plagues will come upon the Babylon because Babylon will come into remembrance before God to give to her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Today we are looking at the word on constant readiness for Christ's imminent coming. Constant readiness for Christ's imminent coming. Three things we are looking at. Number one, deceptive wonders received from the tribulation beast there will be a personality that will be like a beast having the nature of the beast and the nature of the antichrist he'll be a representative of the antichrist and he will perform some so-called wonders deceptive wonders received from the tribulation beast number two diligent watchfulness and readiness of true believers believers are the people they have turned away from anything that will pull them down drag them down anything that will cut their wings they'll not be able to go with the lord on the day of the rapture those believers true believers they are watchful and they keep themselves ready constantly by diligently following after the Lord. We're going to read about them. Diligent watchfulness and readiness of true believers. Number three, damnable wickedness and remembrance of transgressing Babylon. Because in the seat, it will be the seat of the Antichrist. The greatest of evil the depth of evil the height of evil the length and the breadth of evil will be perpetrated in that babylon and from that from that babylon it will be the source of filthiness and the source of falsehood and the source of evil because of that Babylon and the rest of the world taking their cue from Babylon, that because of that wickedness that is damnable, they are coming to remembrance in the sight of the Lord, and great will be the, the, the punishment that will come upon them. Thank God you will not be here at that time. Thank God you'll make it at the time of the rapture. You'll become part of the bride that the Holy Spirit has searched out, has drawn near, and now you belong to the Lord completely. And like Isaac received Rebecca, the Lord will receive you. Receive you to heaven. And there you'll be forever in Jesus' name. Let's look at number one. Number one is the, is the uh, deceptive wonders received from the tribulation 
beast we're looking at verses one and two look at verse one and i heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels go your ways and pour out the veils of the wrath of God upon the earth. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, and the first went and poured out his veil upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped the image there are three things we're looking at here number one divine punishment on worshippers of the beast divine divine punishment on worshippers of the beast number two deceptive power and wonders from the beast the beast and wonders as the people will be suffering and then the beast the antichrist is saying you must take the mark and then they say we're going to take the mark look at our suffering and then there'll be some miracles lying wonders and they'll be deceived thank god i will not be here at that time deceptive power and wonders from the beast number three determined plagues for wonders after the beast the people who wonder about they wonder from this assembly to this association to this congregation to this fellowship they leave christ behind and christ has left them behind and they are wandering about looking for wonders and manifestation of power and then there will be the plagues that will come upon them I will not be a wanderer. I will not be a wanderer. And you will not be a backslider in Jesus' name. Let's look at number one. Number one, divine punishment on worshippers of the beast. I want you to look at verse 2 there. In Revelation chapter 16, verse 2, and the first wage and poured out his veil upon the earth and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men that arch the mark of the beast look at this look at this and upon them which worshipped his image the judgment the punishment will come upon those that worship the bees look at isaiah chapter 13 reading from verse 9 isaiah chapter 13 verse 9 behold the day of the lord comes cruel both with wrath and fierce anger to lay the land desolate and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it the time of the great tribulation is not for saints it's not for the sons and daughters of god it's for the sinners that will remain at the match in their sin look at verse 11 in verse 11 and i will punish the world for their evil understand the punishment comes upon babylon but because babylon is the is the is a switch is where all those dirty, filthy, defiling things gather. And from there, there are some invisible pipes going from Babylon and going to all the places of the world. And they accept all that. And they receive all that. And they manifest and demonstrate all those evil things. I will punish the world for their evil. And the wicked, of the, and the wicked for their iniquity and i will cause the arrogancy the pride of the proud to cease i will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible look at uh, verse 13 in verse 13 it says therefore i will shake the heavens and the earth shall remove from her place in the wrath of the lord of hosts the wrath coming upon them they have rejected mercy 
they have rejected redemption they have rejected the peace they have rejected our redeemer they have rejected christ our savior because of that it says they shall remove out of his place in the wrath of the lord of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger you will not be here I will not be there. Let's look at number two there. Number two there is the deceptive power and wonders from the beast. We're coming to Revelation chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 13. Uh, let, let's hold on now. There are people that think that anything that is beyond the natural, anything that is transcendent, anything that appears is coming from beyond the earth they think every miracle is from god they think every manifestation of power is from god and they don't understand that satan on his own side also has something he can do but he has a purpose, he has a plan, and he works those wonders, he works those miracles, he manifests that kind of supernatural power to deceive. The miracle of Christ is to save. The miracle in the Bible that is coming from the right source is to make us repent, is to make us turn to Christ. But the miracle of the devil, the miracle of the beast, the miracle of the Antichrist is to turn our mind, our hearts away from the Lord. He says, why are you looking for salvation? What do you want to repay? What are you looking for? You're looking for healing. Come on here. And then he gets them into a corner and they rub something on them. And then temporarily something changes. And then he says, now that I give you that, you must be my slave and servant forever you'll not be a slave of Satan deceptive wonders received from the tribulation saints and here is from the beast look at this in uh, Revelation chapter 16 verse 13 and I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon the dragon that's satan and out of the mouth of the beast that's the antichrist representing standing in for satan and out of the mouth of the false prophet the lord already told us that in the last days there shall be false christ and false prophets and they will come and they will even do some wonders if it were possible they will deceive the very elect that's the plan that's the purpose and that's the intention of the devil he wants to deceive people with uh, pseudo miracles pseudo wonders look at verse 14 it says for they are the spirits of devils they are the spirits of devils but they're like frogs they're dirty they're loathsome and they're repelling because they are the spirits of devils walking miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth you'll be surprised the kings of the earth the leaders of the world and they want to solve their problems and they see that science alone is not enough they see that empirical knowledge is not enough and they see that even their own traditions in their own little corner is not enough therefore they will have these people to come to them and make some things for them you call it juju you call it voodoo you call it whatever you call it occultic power and it says the kings of the earth will fall into that and of the whole world to gather them to battle against that great day of god almighty now the miracles of christ will not gather you to battle against his father the miracle of christ and the miracle of servants of god will not make you fight against god but you see this one the miracles and the wonders and the manifestation of power 
by the beast by the antichrist will gather the people together against the lord now when we're talking about this kind of wonders what's the plan what's the purpose number one deception of counterfeit miracles counterfeit miracles those miracles are counterfeit and then they bring uh, something that you know somebody says why would i go to church why would i go to christ why would i go for salvation the miracles are already there and it is deceptive deception of counterfeit miracles number two it causes denial of christ's miracle I've got it already from the beast. I've got it already from the Antichrist. I've got it already from the false prophet. So why do I need to go to Christ? It makes people to deny Christ. Number three is the disregard for Christ's message. Christ now comes and he says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. They say, Keep your message to yourself and keep your pronoun pronouncement yourself already we have an alternative they think is a good alternative but when the judgments begin to fall and when the devastation begins to fall and they now know they are totally hooked onto the devil and there is no remedy anymore i pray that will not happen to you in jesus name number four is delusion uncompromising members delusion uncompromising members there are some members of the church this church that church that other church there is the militant church there is the triumphant church there aren't the people that say i believe in christ i'm saved i'm sanctified i'm filled with the holy ghost but they are so so members they have one leg inside here they have another leg another place and then they hear that wonder are taking place in that arena and miracles are taking place in that arena and because they are compromising members themselves you cannot depend on them Christ cannot depend on them they deluded they deceived and so you have the effect of that kind of miracle upon them delusion of compromising members and then you also have distraction from christ's message another thing it brings is demonization of countless miracle seekers demonization and once you get into that now you cannot get anything from satan free you cannot get miracle like that free he doesn't have grace he doesn't operate by grace he doesn't operate by mercy he doesn't operate by love he operates on i give you this but you sell your soul to me and so you say you want headache to go it, okay I'll, I'll help you i'll make your headache to go but you have to do something this one is straight by butter i give you something you must get some you must say uh, give me back something it's only christ that can come and give everything free salvation free healing free deliverance free and then uh, even when he, he, he healed ten lepers and then only one came back to give thanks the rest of the nine he just says where are the nine he didn't take the healing from them he gave free but satan never gives anything free and at the time of the great tribulation there'll be those false wonders and then once you get that your soul your spirit is sold to the devil and there is the demonization of the people who are running after miracles but you don't need to run anywhere the miracle is here good miracle spotless miracle a miracle that will not injure your soul a miracle that will draw you unto christ and the love of god will forever be in your soul and then there is now the damnation of counterfeit miracle workers even those miracle workers themselves will say that you know they can perform miracles and they get their power 
from the power of darkness and from the beast there will be eventually the damnation of those counterfeit miracle workers look at uh, second corinthians chapter 11 and i'm reading from verse 13 second corinthians chapter 11 and we're looking at verse 13 it says for such are false apostles deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostles of christ in verse 14 it says and no marvel for satan himself is transformed into an angel of light satan himself when he wants to get your soul when he wants to grab your soul when he wants to uh, possess your soul when he wants to demonize you he comes like an angel of light he transforms himself and the people who are looking and searching for miracle for prosperity anywhere everywhere where they are surged into that pit of destruction i will not be there look at verse 15 in verse 15 therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works you will not perish for them I will not perish for them. And you see, there are people who are deceived like that, and they say they are ministers, they are preachers, and all that, and then they go somewhere and they have all these uh, dark powers, and uh, you know, they can say, You are there, this is happening, you are there, that is happening. And wow, the, the Spirit of God here tests the spirits and know which one is of God Matthew chapter 7 we're reading from verse 21 Matthew chapter 7 we're looking at a verse 21 it says in verse 21 not everyone that saith unto me Lord Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he that doeth the will of my father which is in heaven verse 22 says many will say to me in that day lord lord have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils and in thy name have done many wonderful works look at verse 23 and then when i profess unto them i never knew you they were never true believers in the lord their names were never written in the book of life christ did not ever he didn't accept them or associate with them they never turned away from their sin from their iniquity they just jumped into miracle walking adultery is still there fornication their worldliness their lying their deception their stealing their every evil thing occultism there and then they're still walking miracles and jesus said i will profess to them i never knew you depart from me ye that work iniquity i pray that will not be a pronouncement for you on the final day in jesus name number three now let's look at number three determined plagues for wondrous after the beast the people who wander and wander and wander the people who walk about that's where they say it the people who will not stay in a place where we believe the bible will stand for the bible will preach the bible will live out the bible they're wondering about look at uh, this uh, we're looking at revelation chapter 13 uh, and we're reading from verse 4 in revelation chapter 13 uh, we're reading here from verse 4 and they worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast and they worship the beast saying who is like the beast who is able to make war with him they're wondering 
the forgotten that Satan can turn himself to an angel of light to deceive. And when they see those things, they wonder, they marvel, they said, Who is able to make war of the beast? That's why they wonder about. Look at Proverbs chapter 21, verse 16. Proverbs chapter 21. Reading from verse 16, the people that wonder about, I will not be a wanderer. Say it aloud. Once you are looking for a place where salvation is preached very well, absolutely, clearly, and you are saved. And then you are in a place where the word of God is established. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. And you see the holiness demonstrated. You are in a place where the power of God is moving in a precedented manner. You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. When you are in a place where the word of God is emphasized, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples also. If you are in such a place where the Bible is read and studied and obeyed and practiced from cover to cover and then you are still wondering about, look at what happens. In Proverbs chapter 21, reading from verse 16 the man that wanders out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead i will not wonder about say it now say it as if you mean it you will not be a wanderer in jesus name we're coming to point number two now Point number two is the diligent watchfulness and readiness of true believers. The diligent watchfulness and readiness of true believers. There are three things we're looking at here. Number one, the reassurance of Christ's return. Number two, our readiness for Christ's return. Number three, the regret of Christ of Christless reprobates. Number one is the reassurance of Christ's return. Look at uh, Revelation chapter 16. We're reading from verse 15. Revelation chapter 16, verse 15. Behold, I come as a thief. What does that mean? Here is the Lord Jesus himself saying, Behold, I come. And then he said, as a thief. The thieves come when most of the people in the compound, in the community, when they are asleep. The Lord is going to come when many church goers are asleep spiritually. They are not awakened. Their hearts is not awakened. And their mind is not looking up in excitement and expectation for the Lord. At such a time when many people are asleep, behold, he will come. Number two, he comes like the thief because the thief comes suddenly people are not prepared and suddenly they come while well, some people are you know like this like this like that and they're not preparing for the coming of the lord behold i come as a thief suddenly he will come the thieves come unannounced they don't announce generally that's the average thief. They don't announce that they are coming. And the Lord says, I will not announce. That's why I told you to be ready every time. And to be watchful every time. And I pray all of us as leaders, all of us as ministers, all of us as workers, all of us as members will be watching. We will not miss the time of his coming in Jesus' name. Now, the seed, I 
come as a thief. When the thief comes, he doesn't carry everything in the house. The fan that is abandoned, that is not working, the chairs, rickety chairs that nobody is using anymore. The thief doesn't carry that. The thief carries away what is precious what is priceless and what is good when christ comes it's not coming to take every dick and hurry it's coming to take the precious of the earth it's coming to take the people that are precious to him they are washed in the blood of the lamb and they're redeemed by the blood of the lamb and they are precious to the father they are precious to the son they are precious to the holy ghost and they are precious to the whole universe and because of that he comes as a thief and he takes away what is precious to him now when the thief comes the, the thief doesn't uh, you know come and live in that place generally he comes takes what he wants to take and he's gone when Christ comes he's not going to you know live in Nazareth live in Capernaum he's not going to live uh, you know any country America or Africa or anywhere he comes and then all the children of God they are raptured and they're taken away that's why he said behold I come as a thief blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments lest you walk naked and they see his shame he gives us assurance is coming again our christ is coming again our savior is coming again look at chapter 3 of revelation revelation chapter 3 we're looking at verse 11 revelation chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 11 behold i come quickly that's christ talking hold that fast which thou hast that no man take thy crown nobody will take your crown it's announcing to you already you have a crown it's reserved for you in heaven and when he comes and takes you away that crown will be yours revelation chapter 22 verse 7 in revelation chapter two, chapter 22 reading from verse 7 behold i come quickly blessed is he that keepeth the saints of the of the prophecy of this book he announces again behold i come quickly look at verse 12 in verse 12 behold i come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man thank god i'll be there I say, thank God I'll be there to keep every man according as his work shall be. But what if you are not doing any work? You've been saved now, one year, two years, three years. You've been saved seven years, and you have been saved for how many years? 20 years, and you are not a worker. You are not doing any work. You have the talent, you have the skill, you have the training, and you have what it takes. The choir is there, the ushers are there, security people are there, electronics media people are there, and the work is extensive. And you are just there, and you are folding your hand, and you are closing your mouth, and yet the skill, the abilities in you to work for the Lord, what will the Lord reward? on that final day you sow nothing you reap nothing you work nothing and the what will be a reward will be nothing if you plant zero all you can reap is zero but you rise up after this day the leaders may not know you but you go to them you say here i am i'm available my gifts are available my talent available i want to do something that the lord will reward when the lord comes welcome the lord will bless the work of your hand in the church in the ministry and then back at home your profession you will prosper in jesus name look at verse look at verse 20 there in verse 20 there he would testify these things saith surely i come quickly amen even so come lord jesus let's look at number two there number two our readiness for christ's return 
our readiness for Christ's return. Matthew chapter 24 verse 44. In Matthew chapter 24 verse 44, it says, Therefore, be ye also ready. Therefore, be ye also ready. Don't sleep. Therefore, be ye also ready. Don't turn back. Therefore, be ye also ready. For in such an hour, as she think not, the Son of Man cometh. Look at verse 46. In verse 46, blessed is that servant whom is Lord when he cometh will find so doing. You'll be at it. You will not turn away from the Lord. You'll not turn away from the service of the Lord in Jesus' name. Look at Mark chapter 13, verse 32. Mark chapter 13, we're reading from verse 32. But of that day and that hour, no, no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. There is no date setting. The angels don't know the date. No pastor of any church, no minister of any ministry, and no visioner of any religion knows the time when Christ will come. It says, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the father, verse 33, he then says, take heed, watch and pray. Take heed, watch and pray. Take heed, watch and pray. For ye know not when the time is. Watch and pray. What does that mean? The precious experience you have, precious salvation you have, precious commitment, consecration you have, watch over it and pray not only that number two wait and prepare be like those who are waiting they're waiting for their lord and they're waiting for the bridegroom you wait and prepare the time of watching and praying is not a time to be idle and to fold your hand and to say i'm watching what are you watching you must wait you're waiting and you're preparing wait and prepare number three worship and praise worship and praise while the lord is telling you i'm coming again and then you are worshiping the lord in spirit and in truth you are worshiping the lord with all your heart according to the way of righteousness you worship and you praise the Lord. And that's, that's the meaning of really watching and praying. If you are not worshiping, you are not watching. If you are not waiting expectantly, then you are not watching. Number four is that you will also need to witness and preach. Witness and preach. That's why he left us here. Otherwise, the day you were saved, he would have taken you away. And the day he was going, he would have taken all his disciples away. But he told them, watch and pray. And in that watching and praying, there is waiting as well. There's witnessing as well. And preaching the word of God. Number five is to win and preserve win and preserve as you are waiting for the lord he is coming and has given us it says look for the harvest is ripe and pray the lord of the harvest that he will send laborers and vestas into the harvest field is expecting that while you are watching and praying you are winning and you are preserving the converts that are won you are preserving them unto the Lord, if we are willing converse like these uh, six days of meeting together here, and many people from here and from all different states and online, uh, they testify they have given their lives to the Lord, we win and we preserve. Number six is to work and persevere. Work and persevere. You know, working. Uh, draws energy draws out energy 
leads to tiredness and the people that walk in literal and they say i'm tired brother you go and do the rest of the work i want to see now here other people will say sister you know what you are young and it looks like the young blood is running in you and you can go and do that but you know old age has come now he's uh, you know 27 old age is coming on him old age will not sneak on your life in jesus name at 47, at 57, even at 77, the power of God will keep on energizing you in Jesus' name. You will run, you will not be weary. You will walk and you will not faint. This work of the Lord will not die at your doorstep. You keep on doing the work until the Lord calls you home in Jesus' name. You work and you persevere. Number seven is to walk in purity. Walk in purity. As you are walking in the way of the Lord, at the word of the Lord, in the wisdom of God, and you are walking as the Lord himself has ordained. And it says, take heed, watch and pray, because you know not when the time is. When the Lord comes, he will meet you doing the work he has assigned unto you in Jesus' name. Look at number three there. Number three there is talking about the regret of the people who are Christ-less reprobates. And look at that, number three. We're looking in at Revelation chapter 16, and we're reading from verse 15. Revelation chapter 16, reading from verse 15. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he. I am blessed. Somebody there, I am blessed. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and he see his shame. He expects us that the garment of righteousness and the robe of righteousness will remain clean. And you put that on. It's not talking about, you know, this garment we're put on now. This one is to cover the body. It's talking about the garment and the robe that covers your soul and your spirit. Look at Isaiah chapter 61. And I'm reading from verse 10. Isaiah chapter 61. We're looking at verse 10. It says, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my my God, for he has closed me with the garments of salvation. That's the garment he's talking about. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. That's what he's talking about. That when he comes, he'll find you still having that robe of righteousness. It will not, it will not be soiled. It will not be defiled. It will not be dirty. And when he comes, that robe of righteousness will still be on your life in Jesus name. We're looking at Revelation chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 4. Revelation chapter 3 and we're looking at verse 4. Thou hast a few names even in studies which have not defiled their garments. They have not defiled their spiritual garment. It says, and they shall walk with me in white. It's talking about the garment of righteousness there. For they are worthy. The Lord will make you preserve that garment of righteousness in Jesus' name. Revelation chapter 19, we're looking at verse 7 there. Revelation chapter 19, we're looking at verse 7. It says, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the Lamb is come. And his wife has made herself ready. In verse 8 it says, And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen. She should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white for the fine linen. Look at this, look at this. Is the righteousness of the saints and then he has told us keep on that garment and keep that garment clean so that on the final day when the lord will come 
you will not be spiritually naked. I said you will not be spiritually naked. And the Lord will keep that righteousness in your life. You will not be ashamed on that final day in Jesus' name. In First John chapter 2, First John chapter 2, we are looking at verse 28. First John chapter 2, we are looking at verse 28. It tells us there, it says, And now little children, and now young converts, and now growing believers, and now he says maturing members, and now little children abide in him abide in him that when he shall appear we may have confidence and not be ashamed and not be ashamed when you keep your garments on clean and white when you keep the garment of salvation clean and white and you keep the robe of righteousness clean and white and then suddenly he comes you will not be disappointed you will not be confounded and you will not be ashamed before him at his coming in jesus name let's come to point number three now point number three we're looking at damnable wickedness and remembrance of transgressing Babylon. Remember once again, Babylon will be the capital city of the Antichrist when he comes. And it's from there all orders, all instructions, and all laws, and all edicts, and all devastating things, and all the filthiness, and all the falsehood will be coming out. And because of that transgression of Babylon, there will be the damnable wickedness the damnation will come upon them because the Lord will remember old Babylon, mystery Babylon, wicked Babylon. Thank God you will not be here at that time. We're coming to Revelation chapter 16. We're reading from verse 16. Revelation chapter 16, reading from verse 16. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. All that, that's a Greek, is a, the literal translation is the Mount of Megiddo or Mount Megiddo. That's where uh, they had fought battles in olden days. Even Alexander the Great recognized Mount Megiddo and he said that is a terrific and terrible, terrifying Mount of uh, War of Battle. And in the final day, there will be that place in the Hebrew tongue. It will be called Armageddon. Look at verse 17. It says and the seventh angel poured out his fear into the air and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying it is done everything God ordains to be done will finally eventually effectively be done in Jesus name if he pronounces judgment on Babylon that judgment will come if he pronounces blessing on the bride of christ on the children of god it is done that blessing will come in jesus name and the blessing will come upon you and then he tells us in verse 18 in verse 18 and there were voices and thunders and lightnings and there was a great earthquake such as was not since men were upon the earth so mighty an earthquake and so great in verse 19 now it says and great the great city was divided into three parts and the cities of the nations fell and great babylon came in remembrance before god and great babylon came in remembrance before god to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath three things we're looking at number one the remembrance of abominable Babylon. The remembrance of abominable Babylon. Number two, 
the retribution for abandoned blasphemers the people that blaspheme the name of the lord they blaspheme the plan of redemption they blaspheme all the promises and everything the performance of the lord there's going to be the retribution for them because they are abandoned into blasphemy number three the rewards of abiding believers you are that one abiding believer where are you while babylon is burning and while blasphemers are under judgment you will remain faithful to the lord to the very end and the blessing of god the reward of the lord will be upon your life in jesus name somebody shout amen number one number one there is the remembrance of abominable Babylon. Look at chapter 18, uh, Revelation chapter 18, reading from verse 2 there. In Revelation chapter 18, verse 2, and he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, uh, Babylon the great is falling, is falling, and is become uh, the habitation of devils. Anyone in Babylon at such a time, uh, at the time of the fall of Babylon, when Babylon will be the habitation of devils, of demons, wicked demons, and wicked devils, you can tell what suffering uh, will come upon such an individual. That's why, whatever it will take for you to pray, for you to persevere, for you to preserve all the Lord has given you, so that that time of the remembrance of abominable Babylon, you will will not be here on earth at that time whatever you have to do and be ready for the glorious going up you will do in jesus name and then he says it's become the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bond. Look at verse 5. It says in verse 5, For our sins have reached unto heaven, the sins piling up until it reaches unto heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. You will not be here at that time in Jesus. Number two now. Number two is the retribution for abandoned blasphemers. We're looking at Revelation chapter 16 and we're reading from verse 20. Revelation chapter 16 we're looking at verse 20 and every island fled away and the mountains were not found and then in verse 21 it says and there fell upon men a great hill from heaven every stone about the weight of a talent that's like the weight of a bag of cement coming from on high and falling upon people wherever they are those who are inside the plagues are there those who are outside the plagues are there and they'll be crying out and instead of crying for mercy and crying for forgiveness and crying and seeking the lord for salvation no not at all look at what you will do a man blasphemed god because of the plague of the hail for the plague thereof was exceedingly great that's what will come upon them at that time and thank god you will not be here believers you will not be here and those who are holding on and you endure to the very end you'll not be here in jesus name look at number three now number three is the reward of abiding believers who is that abiding believers i said who is that i praise the lord for you you'll be an abiding believer in jesus name pandemic comes and goes you'll be abiding rainy season dry season you'll be abiding temptations trials come you'll be abiding 
and as you abide you'll keep on soaring and soaring above in jesus name and look at the word of god it tells us in hebrews hebrews chapter 10 we're reading from verse 35 hebrews chapter 10 we're reading from verse 35 it tells us cast not away therefore your confidence which has great recompense of reward cast not away your confidence in the lord your faith in the lord and your reliance upon the lord and your leaning upon the lord cast not away the confidence that you have in the lord because the lord is coming soon in verse 36 look at verse 36 for yet for ye have need of patience perseverance that after ye have done the will of God, ye, shall, ye might receive the promise. You receive the promise. Anything you are asking for tonight, you receive the promise in Jesus' name. Look at verse 37. It says, for yet a little while, for yet a little while, he that shall come will come. I will not tarry. Our Lord is coming again. Yet a little while, yet a little moment, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now, we have uh, come almost to the closing of the final day of this great period of soaring above. And I pray everything we have learned, everything we have heard, will remain in our lives and the blessings will remain upon us in jesus name and as that is going to be what do you do what do i do what do we do so that the promise of the lord that the lord has given us that promise will abide forever in jesus name now this is what you are going to do you abide in the lord and you ascend every day you abide and ascend everything you have heard you're not going to leave everything on the chair there where you're sitting you see i have come for this period and here i am i abide i ascend not only that you believe as believers believers in the world believers standing on the word that whatever comes whatever the devil whispers whatever unbelievers whisper whatever you say i believe as a believer and then you consider christ every time are you going through something are you having a challenge are you at home in the dead of the night and then something happens everything you've heard over here you consider christ christ is my healer that thing cannot come christ is my deliverer that thing cannot stay and you'll have the victory in jesus name d you're digging deeper and deeper every day digging deeper and deeper every day where you were yesterday that's not enough today as you come to a new day you dig a little more deeper a little more a little deeper and then you will reach what you're looking for in jesus name he, you eliminate evil completely from your tongue from your mind from your heart you eliminate evil and you emphasize essentials you know there are people they waste their lives on non-essentials but you know if you're going to inherit the promises of god and you're going to have everything that lord has given you you're going to keep everything eliminate evil and emphasize essentials in your life if you fortify your faith you know without faith we cannot please god he that cometh to god must be believe that he is and he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him therefore every time you go back to the world you strengthen your faith you fortify your faith and if you only believe nothing shall be impossible unto you in jesus name 
and then G there is that you give uh, graciously. You give uh, graciously. You know, givers will not lack. The people who are stingy and they are holding everything to themselves and they are eating everything by themselves, those are the people that come to poverty. But then as you give generously and graciously, give, it shall be given unto you. Press now shaking together, running over, shall men put in your bosom. Every lack in your life will be supplied in Jesus' name. Remember this one now, age is to honor your head, honor your head, to start with Christ is the head of the church and we honor him as a head in our character, in our behavior, in our utterances, in our prayer, in our interaction with people, we honor the head, the head of the church. We also honor the head. We honor the head that God has put over us in the assembly, in the fellowship, in the church, and the wife honors the head. That's your husband. You don't do anything dishonoring, anything that is going to dishonor your head. But every one of us, we honor the head, and I will ignore iniquity. Iniquity is coming, and iniquity is trying to get at you and it's going to grab you saying you will commit this iniquity you say no way no way i've given my life to christ and i'm with christ and for christ forever and ever anytime anywhere you increase integrity and you will ignore ignore you will ignore iniquity somebody there say amen, amen. and then you justify justice don't ever support injustice anywhere. Injustice to a little person, to an unknown person, as a child of God, as a representative of God, what we're carrying out from here is that we justify justice in your community in your office in the church anywhere you find yourself you will not justify you will not support injustice but you justify justice will do that in jesus name and then k is to keep to keep your kindness to everyone everywhere you don't understand you don't know who will be the source of bringing uh, that good thing you have been asking for into your life therefore you keep your kindness for everyone of course you love the lord with all your heart all your soul and all your mind you love the lord you see i've come to this program i'm coming out of this place and now my commitment my covenant anywhere everywhere is that I will love the Lord and then I will magnify his majesty in my utterance, in my prayer, in my confession, what I'm going to do I will magnify his majesty and then I neglect nothing all that I've heard all that all the notes have written all the messages have heard soaring above and in the achiever summit i will not neglect anything neglect nothing obey his orders is giving us commandments is giving us the precept where to follow and as we're swearing that's the meaning that every time and everywhere i'm swearing i'm swearing he has given me orders and i obey all those orders and then i possess his promises i possess his promises that is mine that is my spiritual promise natural promise promise of health and promise of advance and promise of progress i possess the promises that is what the lord is asking of us that by the grace of god the goodness of god will never stop in your life in jesus name 
and then uh, you qualify for his qualification he qualifies us for heaven he qualifies us for glory he qualifies us for his goodness and you make sure that every time anything that will disqualify you say no that will not come in here that will not stop here that will not abide here and you are all the time remaining qualified for his for the qualification above on the final day in jesus name i can't hear the amen of my people and then you rise in his righteousness you reign in his righteousness yet iniquity will not reign in your life sin will not reign over you but the victory that we have as children of god every time and you say i reign i reign something is coming that is not righteous i said i've graduated from that one if something for anger is coming and the devil will say get angry get i've graduated from that one i'm going to reign somebody there i'm going to reign you reign in righteousness in jesus name S is to soar steadily, soar steadily. And you, know, you know, some people they soar, then they come down. Then they soar, then they come down. Every retreat, every conference, every revival like this, it appears the fire of revival burns in their soul. And then a week after that, they are back to square one. I will not go back to the old life. You will not go back to the old life. You will soar steadily in Jesus' name. T is to tame your tongue. Tame your tongue. That thing gets us into trouble. That little member burns down the house, burns down the business, burns down the family, and that little member brings a trouble everywhere. But you will tame that tongue. I will tame my tongue. No evil will be on my tongue in Jesus' name. Now uphold usefulness. Uphold usefulness. You see, in our lives, we need to uphold. I discover when I pray like this, I become more useful. When I interact with believers like this, I become more useful. When I avoid this i become more useful and i want to uphold those things in my life that i've discovered makes me useful uphold usefulness and then value the virtues value the virtues the virtues of christ the virtues of healing the virtues of goodness value them and keep them in your life and then walk worthily walk worthily you walk physically you walk worthily you stand erect you walk like a king you walk like you are the owner of all these six around of course you are your father is the owner and what the father has belongs to you i didn't hear your amen on that and so you walk worthily then in your behavior in your christian life in your action in everything you do you are walking worthily and x you exceed expectation exceed expectation that in your life you have said this is the level i am and this is what people expect they expect i'll be this good i'll be this right i'll be this just i'll be this prospered then you shoot up and you exceed every expectation in jesus name why is to yield yourself to yearn for yieldedness yearn when somebody yearns is not satisfied what he has i want to have more i'm saved i want to have more i'm healed i want to have more i'm delivered i want to have more. i'm free i want to have more that yearning you yearn for yieldedness you yearn for usefulness and then z are you ready for this they are not ready. You zoom with zeal. Zoom. 
reach the dragon and then you are bent down and you're walking as if you cannot take the next step but now you get up and you say zoom somebody help me shout zoom you zoom with zeal there's zeal in your heart there's passion in your soul and then when you move like that no devil can draw you back tonight as we bring everything to a close and you have all those things and you're going to walk on them and live like them everything you ask tonight will be given unto you as can you shall receive and see can you shall find a knock it shall be opened unto you everyone that asketh receiveth he that seeketh findeth and to him that knocketh it shall be opened which of you if your son will ask bread will you give him a stone if he will ask a fish Will you give him a serpent if ye then know how to give good things to them that I to them that ask you to your children? How much more, how much more shall your father who is in heaven give good things unto them that ask him? I'm going to have good things tonight. What are you? I'm going to have good things tonight. Why don't you rise up now and open your mouth in prayer and say, Lord, here am I. Here am I. We have come now to the end and to the conclusion of uh, this six-day meeting. And I know you're going to give me all that you have promised. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. So above. So above, don't look back. Don't do like you are doing before. A new day has come. New opportunity has come. So above. Acknowledge, accept. Everything the Lord has offered you. Believe like a believer. Confess positively, confess confidently, what I have, I have, what has given, I receive. Dig deeper, don't stay at the surface, dig deeper, emphasize essentials, Eliminate evil. Fortify your faith. And say, I know, I know. He has promised, and I will receive. Fortify your faith. Give yourself to the Lord graciously. My son, give me your heart. Give me your time. Give me your attention. Give me all you have. Let him be glorified in your life. Honor the head. Don't dishonor the head. Honor the head in action, in appearance, in commitment. ignore iniquity it will try to come they call it temptation ignore iniquity increase your integrity be a man of integrity a woman of integrity watch your voice to the lord like jephthah you're not take back you're not taking away justify justice don't justify injustice don't have anything to do with iniquity and injustice justify justice keep the kindness the kindness in your family be kind in your family be kind in your community be kind everywhere. Let the heart, the life of kindness reach out to people around you. And love the Lord. Love the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, 
and all your might. Love the Lord. Magnify His majesty. It's worthy to be praised. Worthy to be exalted. Magnify His majesty. Neglect nothing of what you have learned, what you have heard, all through this period. Neglect nothing. Obey His orders. Obey his orders. Obey his orders. Possess the promises. They are mine. Possess the promises. They are mine. Let him qualify you with his qualification. Quality of life. Quality of obedience. Quality of absolute surrender to him. Reign in righteousness. Reign in righteousness. Let righteousness reign in your life. Let righteousness rule your life. Tame your tongue. Soar steadily. Soar steadily. And tame that tongue. Tame that temper. Uphold your own usefulness. Whatever will not allow you to be useful, cut it off. Walk worthily. Walk worthily. Walk worthily exceed expectations somebody expects to pray for 10 minutes exceed expectation somebody expects to put that wrong thing right exceed expectation Yen with usefulness. Yen with yieldedness. And soon through life will see you. No sluggishness. No backwardness. No slacking, no tiredness, move on, move forward, and zoom with zeal. In Jesus' name we pray. Overcomers, amen. The victors, amen. The amen of people who are soaring above. 
the blessings of the Lord will never stop in your life. The joy of the Lord will never end in your life. It's bowed and eyes closed. Already you have learned today. There's a time of a coming tribulation. A time of the greatest suffering on earth that had never been. And to escape, all you need to do is to release your life unto Christ. He is a savior. He is a redeemer. He is the only one the Father has appointed and approved to take us away from the present suffering and the coming tribulation. If you're giving your life to the Lord now to escape the judgment, to escape eternal damnation, you're giving your life to the Lord now wherever you are. Just raise up your hand and the Lord will receive you. The Lord will forgive you. The Lord will turn the judgment into mercy. Wherever you are, just raise up your hand. You are inside, you are outside. You are the first gallery, you are the second gallery. God bless you there. Thank you, thank you. Raise up that hand. The mercy of God is coming to you. The salvation of the Lord is coming to you. And as you raise up your hand, just say, Lord, I give myself to you. I give my heart to you. I yield, I surrender unreservedly unto you. And the Lord will receive you. His forgiveness will come to you. His salvation will come to you. Raise up your hand, raise up your hand. In all the other locations, in the city here, in the regions, in the states, anywhere you are, online, you can do that too. Even if you are there by yourself alone, Christ is there and he is Savior. Raise up that hand. Let's pray together now as so you raise up your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this great moment of salvation thank you for your mercy thank you for your love thank you for the promise that whosoever comes to you you will in no wise cast off and i pray that all these people who have come now receive them into your kingdom in jesus name show them your mercy offer them your grace grant them the forgiveness and set them free from their sin and the condemnation of every sin. I pray that you write their names in the book of life in heaven. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Welcome into the kingdom. The Lord has accepted you. And now you abide in the Lord. Remain in the Lord. And great will be the blessings of God overflowing henceforth from now on. Our leaders and ushers, members of the choir are there around you. Just take the sleep and fill in all that we ask there and fill those seeds correctly. And then we'll receive everything back when you have filled those cards. Very quickly, the Lord has received you. You now belong to the Lord. There's no lie, no deception anymore. No incorrect information anymore. Ushers and leaders, ministers, choir members, thank you very much. When you are through, let us know. Your tears are wiped away. 
Your crying wiped away. Your mourning wiped away. The goodness and the grace of God will continue to multiply in your life. As you have given your life to the Lord, indicate so we can know, we'll know that you are now part of the family of God. Leaders who are waiting when you finish, let us know. Raising up your hand means you've abandoned your sins. You've turned away from your sins. You've welcomed the Savior and his salvation into your heart, into your life. The burden of sin is gone. The load of sin is gone. Now you're free. And the promises of God are yours. We're waiting, we're waiting. Ground floor. First gallery. Second gallery. Second gallery. First gallery. First gallery. Second gallery. Second gallery. Are you true? Let's be very fast. We are waiting for second gallery. Praise the Lord. My miracle is here. Where are you? Praise the Lord. You've got it in Jesus' name. Remember this, the final night at this time. Anywhere you are, standing, sitting, your miracle will catch up with you. And today, testimony in your mouth. My son there, testimony in your mouth. My daughter there, testimony in your mouth. And those online, I rejoice with you. Testimony will meet you right there. Are you ready? I know you are ready. Where are you? Raise up that hand. Father, in Jesus' name, we well, thank you for this day of joy, this day of testimony this day of power this day of triumph we thank you because everything you have promised you will do in jesus name i pray that everything your children are asking of you i pray you do it right now in jesus name every sickness in your body out in jesus name pain out in Jesus name incurable disease come out in Jesus name mental problem madness that chain break the chain set your people free become totally normal in Jesus name those who could not hear or speak I pray you give them their hearing in Jesus name Give them their free speech in Jesus' name. Any attack, any affliction of the enemy, I cancel that from your life. You are delivered. You are delivered. You are free. I 
pray, Lord, those who are lame, you strengthen them. You mend their broken bones. You strengthen their body and their bones. And their polio, the palaces will vanish away. Rise up and walk in Jesus' name. Lord, everywhere now. To the right, to the left, at the center, at the galleries. Lord, I pray in the various regions in the states and all our brethren online, everyone connected now, miracle, yeah. healing, yeah. deliverance, yeah. do the impossible in every life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. It is done. It is done. It is done. We bless your name, Lord, for what you have done. In Jesus' name we pray.